rugby is such a fantastic sport. It's remember the Chumba Woman song, and you get knocked down, and you get up again. The main thing I loved about rugby was that the acts of aggression, but afterwards we were all friends. We were all able to, you know, sit, talk about the game afterwards. There was no ill feelings, no ill meant. So it was a very, very good at that time for a young person growing up to channel those energies through that avenue. Set. Head up, head up, Rich, head up, head up. Good. Come down. I got involved because I used to drive a Baco then and all this South Sound area was nothing but pine trees, so I got with my backhoe and I came up here and we cleared the land and we got some fill from the turtle farm and stuff and we made this pitch. But there's a misconception that rugby clubs are drunkards. That, those, no. those days are gone. For you to be competitive, you gotta be a sound mind, sound body. Right, let's pick it up, let's get it done. In 1970, we were like the first thing that ever happened up in this area here, like as far as development is concerned. Once you get it in your blood, it's like, oh my, you know, you just, you don't want to play any other sport. I've never, I mean like soccer, going to school and stuff, wasn't that big, we didn't have that much soccer going on. When I went to school, we had more or less cricket and stuff. and uh, and. Uh, I didn't like cricket that much, so uh, I think I got hit with a ball once and it was like kind of hard and I said no. But a lot of my friends say, well you're crazy, you can come out and, like, and make guys jump on you and hit you in rugby. I said yeah, that's a lot different from getting hit by a cricket ball. I got my son and he's, he started when he was seven years old. I'm proud to see that all the years that I put in to get the pitch and clubhouse and everything looking at, he can, he can follow in my footsteps. and. I hope one day play for the Cayman side. Eh? They, they volunteered to go down and, and te teach the kids, which is I thought was great, you know, and, and still going on now. They, they, they're still going to the different schools and stuff and doing it. And I think, and, they, and there's, there's a lot of kids. If you come down here on a, on a Saturday morning from 8 o'clock, 7.30 till 10 o'clock, you, you'll see that this, this place is jammed with kids all from all sizes, ages and everything out there and they're, and they're, they're it's, it's great. This the social atmosphere after a rugby, uh, rugby game. You know, I've never found that in soccer, so I kind of migrated towards that. And then coming down here, you're immediately welcome. You know, so the atmosphere was positive. And, you know, being a local at the time was considered an expat sport, so, and being introduced to it and welcomed like that mm -hmm. felt, you know, at home yeah. quite easily. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's, that's, that's what, you know, it was all conceived, especially, you know, back in the early days. And, and basically, I mean, they were the initial guys who brought the sport to the island, and, you know, it was known worldwide except in Cayman. Um, but uh, yeah, I, and that's the same thing, you know, that I found, you know, once I got to do that run around, you know, everyone welcomed you. I mean, on the field, you know, you had to be very competitive. Uh, but what changed was once the game finished, everybody was friends, everybody, you know, talked about the game and whatnot and whatnot. 
We went over to Cuba in, in 1993, was it? Yeah. And we were the first rugby club to ever go and tour in Cuba. And they had a Spanish coach. And he wanted to introduce rugby as a sport. But one of the main things he also wanted to focus on was the, the camaraderie and the after game stuff. Right, that, uh, right. So I mean, we had a fantastic time over yeah. there. But he was conscientious with his players, right? This is rugby, this is how we play it. But the whole point of it afterwards is the, um, the atmosphere that the players social. have. I and mean, right. I can walk into any rugby club in the world and say I'm a rugby player and you'll immediately be yeah. welcome with open arms no matter where you are. As kids, like all of us, you know, watching our parents play or fathers play, it was, um, it was something that you always just, I was going to fit right in and do it. Marcus and Campbell, they, they, uh, they dragged me down. They knew that obviously I'd played it at school and everything. And so when I returned back to the island in uh, 91, uh, they worked on me for a little bit and then finally I, I came on down and uh, got solidly stuck in. Yeah. Well, when I arrived here it was generally very much an expat sport, a uh, couple of training days a week and um, a game on a Saturday. The junior programme was very, very limited, uh, a couple of his dads running around with a bunch of kids, probably only about 15 or 20 of them. The biggest change came in reality about um, 13, 14 years ago when we uh, had enough money to employ Richard Adams or Grizz as he's known as the director of rugby. Touch, set, thank you, that's a good hit, that's very good, very good. That would have hurt, good. sponsoring it for the last six years and in that time there have been people moving through the program some uh, children have gone through and played for the national side had that training early on which has helped them if children early on develop or, or understand the key concepts of rugby teamwork respect for each other and for the referee um, hard work hard work producing results then I think if they take that into their into their normal life outside of rugby, whether that be with family, friends, or especially in a professional environment, then I think that produces good citizens. He's a very dynamic folk, uh, fellow, and that's why he's been with us for as long as he has. And, um, you know, while he's, he'll be with us for a long time to come, I hope. It's got to be much quicker, it's got to be much crisper, and it's got to be much lower. Snow covered outside, cold, and got a phone call from Tom Jones at the IRB. He said, you fancy a couple of weeks in Cayman? And I was like, where's Cayman? Caribbean, love it. Be a good union for you, be some good fun. Um, so I checked with my wife, she said, yeah, absolutely, off you go, you know. So I, I came down for three weeks. It was, uh, it, was very, uh, it was very enlightening. Coming in here, I knew that it would be a game that the local children here would enjoy. The problem was getting it to the local children. Uh, you know, and the obvious answer to that is into the schools, um, so that they can play rugby in the schools. I went there's a guy called Clive Rogers who was working at uh, John Gray High School at the time and, and Clive was an English guy, he was a FIFA selector back in the day uh, and he phoned me one day and he said, listen, I hear you want to do this rugby thing, do you fancy coming into the school? And I said, yeah, I'd love to come in. And I went in and there's, uh, there's 60 kids in a class, myself, and I'm looking around going, what am I going to do with these boys? So we split them up 30-30, one end down, one end 
the other lot down the other end, threw a ball in the middle and said, look, we've just got to get it beyond the goal to score. And watch what happened. Absolute bedlam. The following week, I took Jacko down with me. And it did, did the trick. It was you know, the catalyst to kick it off. Jacko gets straight in amongst the lads, starts throwing the ball around, pushing guys, tackling guys. They kind of identified me as one of their own, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And kept doing it, and a lot of kids start coming down because they see they could actually join in and uh, be part of it without considered being outsiders in their own country. Within a couple of weeks, the kids are all playing, enjoying it, loving it, and we're coaching pretty much every boy in the school. Um, so, you know, using local assets is invaluable anywhere you go, uh, using sports that, that people know. I mean, it resembled football far more than rugby. There was multi directional passing it, you know, it's. But the guys were playing and they were having fun and they're using a rugby ball. So then we refined it down over a few weeks and before you know it, the guys are playing a pretty good level of rugby. From then on, along with, with not only national teams, but all the programs that he's put in and, and helped organize for, you know, the junior rugby and stuff like that. And now we see today, I mean, we've got kids out here running around right now. Um, and that has, he has been a, a, a you know, good um, focus point uh, for the whole club and, and for the game of rugby here in Cayman. So I think it, it grew a lot, you know, through him as well. Um, schools is always going to be the answer. Having local players is always going to be the answer. Uh, you can't survive with a national program with, with players who aren't going to qualify to represent the country uh, when they specialise in sport. So, uh, it, you know, it's a huge part. You've got to look, you've got to understand, and you can't, you can't come and impose a system that works somewhere else on a nation of people who have their own culture and their own ideas and their own societies. And if you look at the, um, the team, the under-19 team, I would, I would venture or guess to say that three quarters of them are born Caymanians, you know, if not more, um, with generations of Caymanians involved. So it's very, very positive. All of our under-19s are Caymanian. All of the 26 from the previous uh, under-19 team were Caymanian, and every man jack of them went to university. But they don't hang around street corners, they're not blowing some sort of strange substance in a street corner or somewhere else. They're out there, they're fit, they work to a health and uh, program, they work to a fitness program, and uh, they concentrate on their job. He, he was really dedicated to it, and it transformed his life. We saw it in the types of relationships he built, the type of respect he, uh, respect he had uh, within the Cayman community and the rugby community, sawing, seeing him and his performance and trying to encourage him on. So overall, the experience has been outstanding for Alex. He said, you know, I'm going to focus this year on disciplining myself to improving my fitness and, and hopefully getting accepted into this International Rugby Academy. And it's exactly what happened. I thought I had discipline before, but coming back I, in hindsight, I can see that the discipline that I had before was just a fraction of what is needed to play. To really improve my game, I really wanted to go somewhere where it was number one. It was their only, their, their life, but everyone has a team. Professionalism there is completely different, and you take it far more seriously when you play in such a such an avid country for the game. It's really, really nice. But hopefully what I, what I can help, with the, help the boys with is just, just showing up to training and just leading by example and just sticking with what I was, what I was taught. Coming to, coming to training, make sure you have your food, make sure you have your water, making sure you're ready, ready for training early on time. And just bring, bring a part of the professionalism that I learned there here and you just start inspiring the boys to do things the, the right way. I first found a sport in 2001 when I moved to the island with my family from Canada. Practice the basic skills and it's like, it's key for especially going to university and getting on the teams there um, in the tryouts in Loughborough. The whole first um, tryout was just basic skills and that cut away like half the, half the people trying out just from basic skills so it helps out a lot. Um, just knowing your basics. The junior programs just get better and better and we're able to get it in the schools at younger age so younger kids are getting exposed to, to the rugby experience 
and I just helped so much getting them started, passing the ball, tackling, stuff like that from a young age. It was hard at first because it's the opposite of American football basically. So it took a lot to get used to. You don't see it on TV much because American football is the mainstream thing. When I first started, it was like, I wanted to be the best when we were playing. It was like, why, why can't I catch him? How come I can't do this? I would see everyone else doing it. I was like, and they're all good people. They help you. A lot of opportunities to travel, meet new people. They would send us on tours, Canada, Caribbean. I went to, I went to Fiji for about eight weeks to train with uh, the current coach that's here, Vanasio. We stayed with him, we lived with him, we trained with his team over there. Eat, sleep, breakfast, everything. Sports is a good stress reliever. You build companionship with teammates like Grizz. I basically say Grizz raised me from when I was small. He's like my second father, so took me on there. You need someone to talk to, they're there. There, it's just a Cayman in general and sports, just a all around good feeling outlet if you need help. So opportunities travel wise, if you work hard, there's, there'll always be opportunities for you. Sometimes you have to learn to take orders on the field and just deal with what you're told. In the workplace, it's the same exact thing. Your captain tells you to do this, your boss tells you to do this. You might not agree with it, but they may know better than you most of the time and you just do it. Career-wise, where I am, it's, it's government. So uh, you got just dedication and hard work. You get to the top eventually, like on the field, if things go wrong, just got to work through it and eventually it'll come out good. There's not many of these guys are going to make rugby. They're living. Some, some will make some money. One or two may make it professionally. There's definitely some on the cards at the moment that are, that are close. There's a lot of them are getting education. Certainly got into universities because they could play rugby. Certainly getting financial aid uh, because they play rugby well. Uh, and there's others that, you know, never going to be that good, but rugby's got them into school and, and it's going to make uh, a good living for them. One, one of DART's corporate values is teamwork and respect for the individual. Um, I, I, in, in the community in which we live, it's been very important to us to support youth sports uh, and programming as it helps to build a character and uh, a stronger understanding of what it means to work together to deliver a common result. DART is committed to being an active, responsible corporate citizen. We identified youth sports as a key focus area for our sponsorships and philanthropic giving early on. Dedication and industriousness is a core value at DART. Developing these values in our youth athletes is an important part of their success. And we're so happy to see teams and individual athletes who have benefited from these sponsorships excelling in their chosen disciplines. The kids eventually, and the parents actually, was the ones that needed the education because the kids wanted to play. And a lot of the parents were apprehensive. Mm -hmm. But when they start seeing there was an opportunity, because we played among ourselves for quite a bit, and then the kids were old enough to travel. I mean, right now the academy, the under 12s, 11s, they're going to Bermuda, mm -hmm. they're going to Florida to play. I didn't leave home until 17, mm -hmm. but it was because of rugby. You know, and traveling, that's one of the reasons I've traveled a lot of places I've been to, because of yeah. rugby, which I wouldn't have gone to. Yeah. You know, and like Campbell said, I can you walk into any rugby club in the world and say, yeah, I played for K Mountain and they've heard of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. and you don't have to stay in a hotel. Right. You have a room to stay into if you need to. Same, we used to host all the players when they used to come down here when, the, when we first started. It's kind of the biggest brotherhood in the world. I remember we had a sevens competition. Um, we had won it a couple of years, I think two or three years in a row. So by the fourth year, it kind of. Um, the, how can I say, the excitement for those players had kind of died. Hmm. So we were struggling to find players. I remember we had two or three. We picked up um, Chris's brother. Um, we, didn't have a, we didn't even have shirts or jerseys at that time. I went to a friend of mine that lived up the street at Ocean Club, woke him up, brought him down. He had never played before. <laughs> and we started the first game at nine, seven games later, it's almost dark, and we won it. And it was like, the, it was like, we did, not that we didn't try, but it was like, wow, everything just came into place, mm -hmm. you know, over that, over that one day. And it just goes to show 
what can happen or what will happen, you know, if you put your best foot forward, whether you're, you know, whether you're an expatriate or local or whatever, it was just fortunate for us that day. Mm -hmm. We put the nine guys together and we came down here and we won it. So that was, I think that was one of the, the most fondest memories, mm -hmm. you know, that, that we had. So just because we're from a small nation doesn't mean you can't produce world-class sports people, whether it's in rugby or any one of, the, one of the other sports that we have here. I think rugby, rugby is a sport that suits people from all, all verges of life, all ages, all backgrounds. You've got excellent, top-line, modern thinking people teaching the youngsters, and the youngsters are very receptive to it. Um, they've got that mentality of success, and it does breed success. You know, you look at the under-19 side that won the, the championships in 2008, uh, almost to a T, those guys are still at university now. Most of them are finishing. Uh, some of them are doing PhDs and masters, uh, which is phenomenal. And rugby is a, a sideline. Right? Not many people make their living playing rugby. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a sort of foot through the door. It's a means to move forward, to step in the right direction. But then they have to go in and do the work and, and have the skills to do the education. They've done well enough here. And those are the things that you know, we try and instill to the boys while they're here from a young age. And that's one of the things that Cayman really needs to work on. I think they actually need to have sports in schools because I think it, it, what it does is it alleviates a lot of stress and pressure and later on in life we use it to kind of alleviate that kind of you know, stress from work and stuff. But for the kids, the camaraderie that they get from interacting, especially in team sports versus individual sports, is absolutely essential keeping them off the streets and active for those extra two hours at the end of the day when the, while their parents are still finishing up work. I think to me that's absolutely it's no essential. Brainer, yeah. yeah, it's a no-brainer and it's a good way and they, they learn so many different skills. You know, when, when you're on the pitch and everything, you don't realize it, but you are learning how to deal with situations and how to interact and how to work as a team. You have to function as a team, otherwise you're not going to succeed. And you can watch them out there. You watch a team and you watch them break down and you see what happens to the scoreboard. And I mean, that you know, going back to why you know we were able to take it in a lot of cases, it was purely on the fact that we as a team were very, very bonded and united, and knew each other so well. And that very often helps carry you through. I mean, you only really learn that through actually doing team activities in sports. Yeah, it's it's okay. yeah, yeah, it, I mean, it, the, the, you know, the sport of rugby in particular for me, but and I'm sure it goes with any 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 sports, um, whether it be team or or singular. I mean. The experiences that it carries you um, through through life, you know, uh, like Chris was saying earlier, you know, some of the first times that I've actually traveled in the places I've traveled to and stuff is all because of rugby and due to rugby. And um, you know, it, sometimes you know you may have these things, uh, these reservations. Well, yeah, I like to go to Timbuktu, but maybe not on my own. You know, you have these opportunities and chances and experiences to go with other people who you know maybe traveled before and whatnot. And those are, are, are life um, mm -hmm. experiences that you know carry you through uh, your whole life, you know. So I think it's very great, very good to, to for the sports in Cayman, to, for all the youngsters to keep involved, be involved, and also for you know the governing bodies and everything else, from government down to sporting clubs and stuff, is to keep focused and, and keep that energy going, you know. Mm -hmm. Parents and just learning about exercise at the end of the day you know from their perspective it's you know how do you keep your kid active how, how are they going to move you know i mean a body at rest is it's not healthy it needs it to be active idle. and moving exactly it comes idle and i think you know so parents should take away from it that you know it's another opportunity another way to get out there make friends you know but exercise is absolutely essential yeah. now like james mentioned most of the kids when they're playing they think it's fun but they don't realize they're actually learning a few more things about life. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. to remain focused, discipline, right? You turn up here, specific, specific time, you have to be there. It mm -hmm. translates when you go into the work environment. Right. Right. And you already developed that, and you didn't realize it. Yeah. You, know, you want to be punctual, you know? But it's rugby, <laughs> is, <laughs> it's simple. It's like, like I said, the biggest brotherhood in the, in the world. Plus, the, the amount of people that you interact with, different cultures right that makes you a whole you know rounded person yeah. plus the one thing i took away from the whole thing was just do unto others as you like them do unto you or before they do unto you <laughs> <laughs> um, i was going to say you know obviously with the kids and we talk about idleness you know um, if they come down and they enjoy a sport sometimes with sport you want to get better at it and if you want to get better at it you've got to hit the gym you've got to do the diet 
and it, you know you're putting in good stuff into your body proteins and, and carbohydrates you're not putting other things into your body when you're just idly sitting doing nothing um, and so yeah I would say to parents you know who are watching this that um, to come down to the rugby club it is a very positive atmosphere we will welcome your children um, and they will they will have a very positive experience I'm very very don't forget the women. Uh, and the of women. course, yes, right. I'm sorry. And the, the ladies as well. Yeah, well I'm going yes. to tackle the one because most people have go. this misconception <laughs> about the rugby club. Uh, as far as the social side goes, yeah, everybody goes and they have a drink. But one of the things I've learned when even playing here, I didn't drink until I was 21, simply because everybody that I played with basically said, give your body a chance to develop. All right? And when you see that development, you'll see how much better you're on the pitch. I mean, we weren't allowed in the club until I was about 15. And it's like, no, you get Gatorade. <laughs> you know, and that was it. But there's a misconception that rugby clubs are drunkards. That, those, yeah. those days are gone. For you to be competitive, you gotta be a sound mind, sound body. Yeah, what's my job, to create winning teams? Probably not. My job's really to create decent people. Um, who are going to work hard to achieve something. And if that means we're going to win something, that's great. If it means we come second or third, that's great. The important part is, is that we give everybody somewhere to be, something to do and something to aim for. Um, and, and, you know, I'll be honest, I, I get more joy out of that than I do anything else. When I was getting married, I told the preacher, because I said to my wife, you know, you got to go for counselling and stuff. And the, I told him, I said, I need you to tell my wife that whatever happens now, don't get in the way of my rugby tours or my rugby game. So she agreed to that, so I said, okay, I'll marry you. <laughs>